Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another video about the most dangerous weapons. Let's begin our video about the creative innovations of destruction. Top of the list is Tsar Bomba. The Tsar Bomba, also known by the alphanumerical designation a N602, was a thermonuclear aerial bomb, and the most powerful nuclear weapon ever created and tested. The Soviet physicist Andrei Sakharov oversaw the project at Arzama 16, while the main work of design was by Sakharov, Viktor Adamsky, Yuri Babayev, Yuri Smirnov, and Yuri Trutnev. The project was ordered by Nikita Khrushchev in July 1961 as part of the Soviet resumption of nuclear testing after the test ban moratorium. With the detonation time to coincide with the 22nd Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, tested on the 30th of October 1961, the test verified new design principles for high-yield thermonuclear charges, allowing, as its final report put it, the design of a nuclear device of practically unlimited power. The bomb was dropped by parachute from a Tu-95V aircraft and detonated autonomously 4,000 meters above the Cape Sukhoi Nos of Severny Island, Novia Zemlya, 15 kilometers from Michishika Bay. The detonation was monitored by United States intelligence agencies via a KC-135 aircraft during Operation Speed Light in the area at the time. A secret U.S. reconnaissance aircraft named Speed Light Alpha monitored the blast, coming close enough to have its anti-radiation paint scorched. The bomb yielded 50 to 58 megatons of TNT. On number two is multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles. MIRV is an exotmospheric ballistic missile payload containing several warheads, each capable of being aimed to hit a different target. The concept is almost invariably associated with intercontinental ballistic missiles carrying thermonuclear warheads, even if not strictly being limited to them. By contrast, a unitary warhead is a single warhead on a single missile. An intermediate case is the multiple re-entry vehicle missile which carries several warheads which are dispersed but not individually aimed. The first true MIRV design was the Minuteman III, first successfully tested in 1968 and introduced into actual use in 1970. The Minuteman III held three smaller W-62 warheads with yields of about 170 kilotons of TNT. In a MIRV, the main rocket motor or booster pushes a bus into a free-flight suborbital ballistic flight path. After the boost phase, the bus maneuvers using small on-board rocket motors and a computerized inertial guidance system. It takes up a ballistic trajectory that will deliver a re-entry vehicle containing a warhead to a target, and then releases a warhead on that trajectory. It then maneuvers to a different trajectory, releasing another warhead, and repeats the process for all warheads. Coming up next is Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. An ICBM is a ballistic missile with a range greater than 5,500 km primarily designed for nuclear weapons delivery. Conventional, chemical, and biological weapons can also be delivered with varying effectiveness, but have never been deployed on ICBMs. The first practical design for an ICBM grew out of Nazi Germany's V-2 rocket program. Most modern designs support MIRVs. Early ICBMs had limited precision, which made them suitable for use only against the largest targets, such as cities. Second and third generation designs such as the LGM-118 Peacekeeper drive automatically improved accuracy to the point where even the smallest point targets can be successfully attacked. It has also proved to be an easy answer to proposed deployments of anti-ballistic missile systems. ICBMs usually use the trajectory which optimizes range for a given amount of payload An alternative is a depressed trajectory, which allows less payload, shorter flight time, and has a much lower apogee. Up next is Father of All Bombs. Aviation thermobaric bomb of increased power nicknamed Father of All Bombs is a Russian-designed, bomber-delivered thermobaric weapon. The bomb is reportedly similar to the U.S. military's GBU-43B massive ordnance air blast which is often unofficially called mother of all bombs derived from its official military acronym MOAB. This weapon would therefore be the most powerful conventional weapon in the world. FOAB was successfully field tested in the late evening of the 11th of September 2007. The new weapon is to replace several smaller types of nuclear bombs in the Russian. The thermobaric device yields the equivalent of 44 tons of TNT using about 7 tons of a new type of high explosive. Because of this, the bomb's blast and pressure wave have a similar effect to a small tactical nuclear weapon. The bomb works by detonating in mid-air. Most damage is inflicted by a supersonic shockwave and extremely high temperatures. In comparison, the MOAB produces the equivalent of 11 tons of TNT from 8 tons of high explosive. 
The blast radius of the FOAB is 300 meters, almost double that of the MOAB, and the temperature produced is twice as that of the MOAB. On number, a chimera or chimeric virus is a virus that contains genetic material derived from two or more distinct viruses. Chimeric flaviviruses have been created in an attempt to make novel live attenuated vaccines. Combining two pathogenic viruses increases the lethality of the new virus which is why there have been cases where chimeric viruses have been considered for use as a bioweapon. For example, the Soviet Union's Chimera project attempted in the late 1980s and early 1990s to combine DNA from Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus and smallpox virus at one location, and Ebola virus and smallpox virus in another location, even in the face of Boris Yeltsin's decree of the 11th of April 1992. That's all for today, rest in the next video. See you soon.